Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow Motivation. Happy Thursday to everybody. God bless you all. I hope you all are having a very blessed day today because this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't have no earrings on today, uh, nor no jewelry. We got just on here to do our series. So we are, today we are doing, still doing the basic elements of the Christian life, but we are on season two, our series two, part one. And part one is we're going to be talking about the precious blood of Christ, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to be talking about. And we know that when we talk about the precious blood of Jesus Christ, it, we're talking about the physical that. The physical life requires certain elements, certain elements, okay? The spiritual life requires certain basic elements, which is one of them is the blood of Christ. So, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the fall of man and how because we fall, because we fail, because we sin, how it gives us causes us to have three basic problems. The first problem is going to be our separation from God. The second problem is uh, our sense of guilt within ourselves. And the third one is our sense of accusation, talking about Satan now. Okay, these parties uh, actually represent God, ourself, and Satan. That was the three problems represent three parties, God, the first party, Ourself, the second party, and Satan is the third party, okay? And we're going to find out, uh, read about it. It's going to help us to understand how we can overcome these problems. And it's going to tell us how we can overcome them with what, okay? And then also, I have a whole lot of scriptures that go with this, these series. That's why I'm just reading them and giving you scriptures because this is it's getting long. When I be studying, I'm telling you, I be up uh, a while studying these lessons they they are long but they are so worth so so worth your time you know so let's go ahead and get into the reading let's say a word of prayer and then we're gonna jump right on into here because we don't want this video to be too long time goes fast remember time stands still for no one Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for bringing us back to this platform. We thank you for waking us up and allowing us to live to see another day, God. Because if it wasn't for your grace and mercy, we wouldn't have woke up this morning. We thank you for all of our families, Lord. Friends, neighbors, co-workers, peers. I thank you for each and every subscriber, Lord. I thank you for everyone that watches this video, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because, Lord, we already know that every day of our life is already being predestinated. Okay, God? We know that you already mocked us to be your people. So, God, I'm asking that you let your words today that I read and let the words that come out of my mouth, God, be an uplift, a motivation, God, encouragement, and a help to somebody never a hindrance. And in the name of Jesus, God, I ask that you take everything out of me that's not like your son, Jesus, right now. I'm asking that you crucify flesh right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I ask that you let your words be a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers, listeners, learners, and viewers. God, and let your word today be the truth and every man be a liar. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. Covered by the blood. Let's jump right into this reading because y'all won't believe that is three, four minutes already. So let's read, okay? The precious blood of Christ. To sustain your physical life, you need certain basic items such as water, oxygen, food. We need clothing, shelter. In addition to our body, it requires a certain amount of proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Also, these are essential things that our body needs to function, to live in, in today. His world in this flesh we need those things okay without that the body this body would not live okay without all these our physical life would die if we don't get water oxygen food clothing shelter vitamins proteins and minerals our physical physical body it would it would it would die it can't survive okay it is the same with your spiritual body. Just like our physical body needs those things to survive, our 
spiritual life needs the same thing. It says your spiritual life, just like your physical life, requires certain basic elements. These are essential. Talking about the spiritual life. Now, remember, this is all spiritual. We ain't talking about natural flesh. We're talking spiritual, okay? Without them, you will find it difficult to serve, to survive as a Christian in a world that does not know Christ. One of these basic elements that we need to survive, I'm talking about our spiritual life, is the blood of Christ. Yes, the blood of Christ. Why do you need the blood of Christ? Because essentially, fallen man, we have three problems. Talking about them three basic problems, those three parties I told you guys about. Even as a Christian, we still carry around the fallen human life. So day after day, we may still be plagued with these three problems. These three problems involve three parties. Three parties. Okay? God, ourself, and Satan. Towards God, we often sense a separation when we fall into sin. Okay? Within yourself, within ourself, we often sense guilt also. And from Satan, you often sense accusations, okay? These three separations from God, feelings of guilt, the accusation of Satan, can be three big problems in our Christian's life. How can we overcome those three problems? The only way we can overcome those three problems I just told you guys about is the blood of Christ. The blood. Yes. Now, let's talk about the separation. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, okay, we're going all the way back to the Genesis. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, he immediately hid from God. You can read it in Genesis 1. When, he, when Eve talked her husband, Adam, into eating that forbidden fruit, they, once they bid it and ate it, once they consumed a piece of that fruit, they immediately hid themselves from God. Immediately. Before Adam sinned, he enjoyed God. He enjoyed God and was in his presence all the time. Because God created Adam to, to, uh, to love him, to obey him, to, be, to keep him company. Okay? That's why they said God walked through the Garden of Eden. He created Adam for his purpose. And he gave him the rules when he created him and told him what to do, what not to do, what to eat and what not to eat. Okay? But yet, after he, after Adam sinned, he hid. Sin always, always causes a separation in us from Christ. Always. Even as Christians, we may experience um, we may experience this after uh, after we commit some sins. No matter what it is, you know, I'm I'm not just gonna name sin after sin, but we know what a sin is. If we don't, we don't all know what our sin is, but we know when we sin, it do causes us to kind of separate from God because we 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 are sad, we are embarrassed. Okay, and then that way it causes us, it causes us to build up a sense of um, of of guilt to where we want to hide from God. It causes us to build up a sense of guilt, what to make us want to hide from God. A sense, a great, it causes a great guff between us and God. I can put it like that. That's the best way I can see it. And you know what guff is? It's a, a whole ocean of water. Okay, because God is righteous, he cannot tolerate sin. And this is what the prophet Isaiah said. He said, no, Jehovah's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear 
so heavy that it cannot hear. He said, but your iniquities, your sins, but your iniquities have become a separation between you and your God. He said, and your sins have hidden his face. Our sins hide their face. Uh, uh, it caused us to hide our face. Okay? And then it say, from so so that hide his face. Our sins causes God to hide his face from us so that he does not hear us anymore. Okay? He don't hear us no more until we repent and make that thing right with him again. Okay? We can read that. Let's go to Isaiah 59, 10 right quick. It's going to say the same thing I just said. It just... Let me guess. Isaiah. See, this will be taking a while right here. Isaiah. When I have to go through this Bible, and I know where these chapters is, it's just that the pages in this my King James Bible is so thin that you literally got to wet your fingers and turn it. We go on to Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Listen to this. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save you, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and God. And your sins have hid his face from you. Your sins have caused God's face to be hid from you. That he will not hear you. Yes. That's what happens. When we sin, it causes God to, to turn his face from us. It causes his ear to close. And he can't hear us. All because of our sins. That's why we have to repent quick when we know that we're doing something. Because your spirit will convict you. Your conscience will convict you and let you know what that is if you're spiritual. Okay? Everybody's not spiritual. But if you are spiritual, if you know God, and if God lives inside of you and you is with him, then you will know. Your spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. If we go to the footnotes on 59, 1 and 2, it says, Sins offend our holy God. Sin offend our holy God. Because God is holy, he cannot ignore our sins. He cannot excuse our sins and he cannot tolerate sin as though it do not matter. That's not God. He cannot do that. He cannot do that. Sin cut people off from God. That's what our sin do. It cuts us off from God. Okay? Forming a wall to isolate God from the peoples that he loves. God don't want to isolate. He don't want to I be isolated from us. He loves us. He loves us so much that he gave his son. He gave, He let his son die for us. So you think he want to be isolated from us? No. Okay? And then they say, no wonder this long list of wretched sins make God angry and forces him to look the other way. Let's not purposely sin or sin knowingly that we got too much pride to repent and make things right with God again so that we can be covered in the blood. God said he forgives us 70 times, 77 times a day. That's a lot of forgiveness. So there's no reason to sin and then don't repent. If you know you done went and laid yourself down and connected your body with somebody, which all you doing is every demon and spirit in them is going right in you because y'all joining together. And what happened when you do that is, guess what? The Holy Spirit jumped right out of you. It ain't dwelling in you no more. So if you know that you're sinning, and you know it's a sin that going to cause God to turn his head out and close his ears or don't look at you, repent. Plain and simple, repent. Because we all sin every day and come short to the glory of God. Repent and make it right with God. Then it says, um, 
uh, the, the, the peoples who die with their life of sin, unforgiving, separate themselves eternally from God. God wants them to live with him forever, but he cannot take them into his holy presence unless their sin is removed. Okay, let's keep reading. After Adam sinned, God did not say, Adam, what have you done? God didn't say that. He didn't say, Adam, what have you done? If you done read the story, and everybody should be done read that story because they got so many different stories to it. Talking about it was an apple. The Bible never said it was an apple. He said a forbidden fruit. He didn't never say it was an apple. But anyway, after Adam had sinned, God didn't come to him and say, Adam, what have you done? No, he didn't do that. Rather, but this is what God did. God said, Adam, where are you? He wants to stand about asking him what he done. He wanted to know where he was. In other words, God is not as much concerned with, with your sins. Okay, let me try that again. God is not as much concerned with what sins you may have committed. God ain't so concerned with the uh, the type of sin, that, uh, what sin you committed, okay? He's not that concerned with that. But he is with the fact that your sins cause you to, instead of y'all being together, your sin, once your sin causes you to separate from God, that's when he get concerned. He concerned with that. Because he loves us. We're his peoples. Okay? Now, God loves us, but he abhors our sins. He loves us, but he do not like our sins. Okay? As long as your sins remain, God must stay away. In this condition, you feel very far away from God. When we let our sins uh, overtake us and start controlling us, cause us to be separated from God, mm -mm. it causes us to stay away from God. Okay? This is... I got to say this. Don't let your lust for somebody else's husband, don't let your desire to just have sex with anybody, don't let your addiction just because you're drinking alcohol causes you to separate from God because in order for us for God to come back to us the sin must go I'm trying to make this make sense you know because I write stuff down and I don't write it right but I'm trying to make it make sense and if God said the same, it's going to make sense. Okay. But there is only one thing in the entire universe that can take away our sins. And that is what? The precious blood of Jesus Christ. There is no amount of prayer. There is no amount of weeping. It ain't no amount of no ritual. There is no penance. There is no promises to do better, no guilty feeling, no periods of waiting. There is no nothing but the precious blood of Christ that can remove our sins. Let's go to Hebrews 9.22. We're going to get this thing right today. We're going to get it. Hebrews 9.22. I'm, I'm going to read some of these scriptures to y'all today. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 22. It says, it reads as this, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Talking about the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Without shedding of blood, without the precious blood of Jesus Christ, there is no remission for your sins. Let's go to the footnote. It says, let me make sure I get it. It says, why does forgiveness, which means remissions, remission means forgiveness, 
require the shedding of blood. This is no arbitrary decree on the part of a bloodthirsty God. As some have supposed, there is no greater symbol of life than blood. Blood keep us alive. It's the blood of Jesus, the reason we is here today. Okay? Jesus shed his blood. He gave his life for our sins so that we wouldn't have to experience spiritual death. If you don't repent of your sins, that means you are dying spiritually. And Jesus gave his life and went to the grave so that we would not have to face spiritual death. Which is eternal separation from God. Spiritual death is eternal separation from God. Eternal means forever. Being separated from God. Jesus is the source of life, not death. He gave his own life to pay the penalty on behalf so that we might live. Mm, mm, mm. After shedding his blood for us, he rose. Jesus rose from the grave and proclaimed victory. Hallelujah. Over sin. Jesus, how you my God, and death. So why should why 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 do we want to sin? Because it's killing him over and over and over again. We don't want to keep putting Jesus in the grave. We don't want to keep causing him to keep have to repeat victory over sin and death over and over and over. Let's keep reading so we can get through this thing. Now, um, uh, let me see where do I want to go. When, what then should you do when you have sin and feel far from God? What should you do when you sin and feel far from God? You should simply, we should simply confess that sin to God and believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has taken that sin away. Because that's exactly what happened. That's what happened. First, First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sin, that he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So whenever we feel that we have sinned and we feel that we are far from God or that God is so far from us that he can't hear us and, and, and all that, we need to go to 1 John 1 and 9 Confess our sins and believe in our heart, mind, spirit, body, and soul that he forgive us our sin and that he done cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And when we confess those sins, immediately, immediately, like the blink of an eye, our distance between God and us is gone back together. It's gone back together. Yeah. So don't worry, don't worry about any feeling or, or lack of feeling at this point. The blood of Christ is primarily for God's satisfaction, not for yours. Remember, God said, when I, when I, not you, he said, when I see the blood on the night of the Passover, talking about when he had them to put the blood on the door. He, God wasn't concerned about it. He wasn't even, listen, he said, as long as that blood is stained on the outside of that door, you're going to be saved. You're going to be protected. If you want to read about that, let me see. Where I got that? You want to read about that? Go to uh, John one twenty nine. Let me read this. It says, this is illustrated in Exodus. Some of the children of Israel may have been sinful 
as the Egyptian. When God sent an angel the day to slay the firstborn children in the land of Egypt, he did not say, when I see your good behavior, I'll pass you over. So we don't know who was in that house. It could have been somebody in that house that had that bloodstained spot on it that was that was not saved. That was not uh, one person that believed totally in God. But they was in that house because they was in that house and they had their mom that stained blood outside the door. They were saved. They was protected. They were spared. They did not get killed because remember that God was finna go through and every firstborn child was finna be killed. Now let's get back to what we was reading. It said, remember God said when I, he didn't say you, he said when I see the blood. On the night of the Passover, the children of Israel were within the house while the blood of the lamb was without on the outside of the house. Okay? Within the house, listen to this, they could not see the blood. Nevertheless, they had peace through knowing that God was satisfied with their blood. They know that they was gonna be their house was gonna be spared. Death was not gonna come and touch that house because the blood had been stained outside the wall. They had obeyed God. Now it said once a year on the day of atonement, the high priest went alone into the holy of holies to sprinkle the blood on the uh, expi expiation cover of the ark. That's in Leviticus. 16, 11 through 17, if you want to read it. No one was allowed to watch. This is the shadow of Christ who, after his resurrection, went into the heavenly tabernacle and sprinkled his own blood before God as a propitiation for our sins. And that is in Hebrews 9, 12. Let's go to Hebrews 9, 12. We already there. Let's just flip over and go to 12 and see what it's saying. It said, neither by the blood of goats, calves, but by his own blood, he entered into one, entered, entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For us. He did it for us. And then the footnote said, though you know Christ, you may still be trying to make yourself good enough for God. We don't have to make ourselves good enough for God. Okay, he said, but rules and rituals have never cleansed peoples. Never have rules or rituals cleansed peoples. Hearts. It said, by Jesus' blood alone, one, number one, our conscience are clear. Exactly, our conscience are clear. Two, we are free from death sting and we can live to serve God. Number three, we are free from the sin's power. We are free from sin's power. Those are the three things that Jesus' blood do. Okay? It clears our conscience. It frees us from death and give us, uh, put us at a place where we now can serve God. And it frees us from sin's power, from Satan's power. Okay? And then it say, if we are carrying the load of guilt because we are finding that you can't be good enough for God because we, we ain't got to make ourselves good enough for God. God said, let me, he said, you do the plan and I will do the increase. All you got to do is guess what? Plant your soul, repent, give them sins to God. That's all you have to do. You ain't got to be good enough for him. Then it say, if you are carrying a load of guilt because you are finding that you can't be good enough for God, take another look at James. Take another look at Jesus' death and what it means to you. Then it say, this imagery comes from the Day of Atonement, which was described in Leviticus 16. Redemption refers to the process of paying the price ransom to free slaves by Christ's death. By Christ's death, guess what? Christ paid the ransom for our sins with his life, his blood. He freed us from the slavery of sin forever. Let's finish reading. Now, it says, yet it is, yet it is there 
it is there speaking for you, talking about God's Jesus blood. It is there speaking for you in Hebrew, Hebrews 12, 24. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 24, and then we finna be through. Hebrews 12 and 24. Hebrews 12, 24, and it reads as this. And to Jesus, the mediate, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. 12, 24. And if we go to the footnotes, it says, What a contrast between the people terrified approach to God at Mount Sinai and their joyful approach at Mount Zion. What a difference Jesus has made. Before he came, God seemed distant and threatening. After he came, guess what? God welcomed us through Christ into his presence. When Jesus came, we was welcomed into the presence of God. And then it's telling us, don't, what it's telling us is don't neglect uh, to accept the invitation from Jesus Christ so that you can be in the presence of God. Don't neglect it. Don't reject it and don't neglect it because the blood of Jesus done did what it's supposed to do so that we can be free. It did what it's supposed to do so we can, um, so that we can have a clear conscience we can be closer to God. We can serve God. We free from sin. The blood doing what it's supposed to do, people. It's so simple. Then it says, okay, even though you cannot see the blood, you can believe in its effectiveness. This blood solves your problems towards God. Yes. If God esteemed the blood of Christ sufficient to remove our sins, we can do the same thing. We can do the same thing. We can believe that same thing. Or do you require some good feelings? Do you need good feelings? Something need to make you feel good just to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Mm. Listen, can your requirement be higher than God's? No. You must simply confess, oh God, Thank you that the blood of Christ has taken away all my sins. If you are happy with the blood, then I am happy also. That's what we need to be telling God. I am happy with the blood of Jesus. I thank Jesus for giving his life for me because I wasn't worthy of death. And his blood set me free. His blood set me free. His blood set me free. It set you free. It set us free. Don't don't let us go back to uh to um don't let us have to go back over and over and over again and keep reading the same thing because it tells us right here that Jesus is the source of life. He's in not death, and he gave his own life to pay the penalty for our sins that we might live okay after shedding his blood for us he rose from the gate the grave and proclaimed victory over sin and death you don't have to be afraid of death and sin have no more power over you over me over none of us i hope you guys got something out of this lesson that actually concludes this uh episode one I have some footnotes here, actually, that, I mean, some scriptures that I want to share with you guys, but I hope you guys is really getting something out of the basic elements of the Christian life. This series, part one, talking about the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let me give you some scriptures. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, John chapter 1, verse 29, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, Hebrews 9 and 12, Hebrews chapter 12, 24, Hebrews 9 and 12, 
See, I wrote that twice. My bad. Hebrews 9 and 14. Psalms 103 and 12. Jeremiah 34 and 34. And Psalms 32, 1 and 2. Pause the video. Write those scriptures down and read them. They goes with this series. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of the Father God in the name of Jesus right now. I come to you, Lord, asking you to forgive us all for our sins. I'm asking that you put within us a spirit of discernment. Lord, I'm asking that you fill us with wisdom because you said those who lack wisdom, let them ask. And God, we ask that you let every word of yours be the truth and man be a liar. We ask that you let your worry be a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers, listeners, learners, and viewers. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen, covered by the blood. And with that being said, I'm finna end this video. Happy Thursday. God bless. Remember, we are all under one God, one nation, one love. Peace we have because Jesus left that peace here for us. And peace I shall have. And remember that God loved you so much that he gave his one and only begotten son. He allowed his son to shed his blood for our sins so that he can go down in the grave. And he beat, defeated death and sin. Sin have no more power over us. Thank you guys for watching. God bless. Happy Thursday. I love you all. See you in the next video.